So this lesson is on lettuce and faxes. And lettuce and faxes is part four of module four written communication as we find it in business literacy by the ICB. Now, um, you might think that letters and faxes are something that dates from another era and that we don't really use them anymore. You can't be more wrong. We still use letters regularly. Letters is a formal way of communicating and you might be speaking to somebody via email, um, but then you will still write a formal letter and attach that letter as an attachment to your email. It's not professional to put all the information in the email. It's always better to attach a letter as an attachment. As far as faxes are concerned, well, um, faxes are really not used that often anymore. But uh, in South Africa, many of our government departments still use faxes. But what you can do is you can download uh, email to fax software and then you can compose an email and you can actually send that email to a fax number. Okay, so let's have a look at letters and faxes in a little bit more detail. I just want to say to you that in your textbook, there are a lot of sample letters that you can have a look at. I didn't make slides of the sample letters per se. I'm just going to look at letters and faxes in general, but it should be enough for what you are going to need in your assignments, test, and exam. So when we look at written communication in the business, there are many other types of uh, communication in written communication in the business environment. But the first two you see there is the letter and fax. And I'm going to look at letter and fax in this particular presentation. And then I will quickly look at all the others in part five of module four of business literacy. What you need to remember about all these different communication types is that each one of them has a unique layout and a format. That is what makes it letter or fax or email or email or whatever. There's a specific style and tone. You need to know which of these are more formal and which are less formal. There is a specific opening and closing structure, especially when you are working with letters. And it is always important to plan and edit. Remember, we had a look at editing before. Um, so whether it is an email or whether it is a letter, even if it's just a simple memo, do not let anything leave your table that looks unprofessional. Please edit it before it leaves your table or before it leaves your PC or before you hit the send button. So letters, what is a letter? A letter is a written message that is addressed to a person or an organization. It is a written message that is posted. Now, no, many parts of the world, uh, it is true that you can still post letter and many countries still make use of post that letters ex uh, extensively. What I am saying to you is what I stated in the middle. Remember, letters can also be sent as attachment to emails. Okay. Some areas still have no electricity or wireless technology. Even in South Africa, and especially in South Africa, there are parts of our country that's remote and uh, where the only way that you are going to get a letter to those people is actually to send them a letter via the South African post office, uh, though it might not, might not always be reliable. Uh, places like PostNet will go and deliver a parcel or letter to an outlying area, but it will take a lot longer. I And there's post nets in most of these places, but something that you can now use is I see that PIP now has a postal service and there are PIP stores in most even rural areas, so you can make use of that as a post office, although it's primarily a parcel delivery service. Some older people still prefer to post letters. It is what they grew up with and it's what they are used to. It remains more authentic. It just, people believe a letter that they can see a signature that's been put on there with pen. They can feel a little indentation more than they, uh, than they trust a letter with an electronic signature. If you are going to use an electronic signature on your letters, 
please sign on a piece of paper, scan that and save that scanned image. It still looks better than trying to create an email signature using the fonts in Word. Okay. Delivery can be assured. I don't always know if delivery in South Africa can be assured anymore, but in the UK, a letter posted in the morning will be delivered by that afternoon. The aim of any letter is that it gets read, it is understood, and it is acted upon. Then you can see what I've done there. I've given you a couple of templates uh, of different business letters. Now, when you, uh, in, when you are using a word or any other word or any other word processing program, you can just click on templates and it will give you one and you can then choose one that uh, meets your criteria the best and then you can send it and it will look very professional. How do you ensure that your letter gets read? Well, uh, the style and tone depends on the writer, the organization and the purpose. But there are a couple of practical principles and tips that you need, need to keep in mind. Keep it short. Do not write long or long-winded sentences. If you have to use more than one comma in a sentence, that sentence is probably too long, and I would break it up in two sentences. It's just easier for people to read and understand. Get to the point in the first paragraph. People want to know what your letter is about. Don't write this long introduction and only then get to the point. Get to the point in the first paragraph as soon as possible. Don't be vague. Be specific. Even if you are asking for donations, if you ask people for something very specific, you are much more likely to get it than when you uh, write a vague message. Don't state the obvious. Avoid avoid saying things in two different ways. If you've said it, you've said it. You don't have to say it again. Use easily understood language. Uh, and, and think of your audience again, like always. If it is language that they would not understood, or if it's language that somebody has to actually now go and look it up in a dictionary, they are possibly going to think that you are just pompous, and uh, they will uh, be negative towards you from the outside. Also, avoid flowery language. You are not writing a novel. You are writing a letter, so stick to the point. Be original. Um, even if you use a template, do not use the words in the template. Um, be, be original. It must still be your message, your personality. You must sign three and use an uncluttered layout. Uh, a paragraph in a letter should really not be more than five lines, uh, else br uh, break it up into a second paragraph. Some practical tips. Remember to put the date in full. Uh, including the year. Sometimes people will receive uh, or, or will look up a piece of mail long after the time and they can't recall whether they received the information three or four or five years ago. So the date must be in full, including of the year. If you are going to use a time that you sent the letter, sometimes that is useful, especially if you're going to address uh, the person as afternoon or good morning, then um, it makes sense that it correlates to the 24-hour clock that you are using, so 10, 22, or whatever. Write in full the first time you write uh, something and only use abbreviation. So if you're going to tell somebody about that you are studying through the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers, first time you write it, you will say Institute of Certified Bookkeepers, with the abbreviation in brackets, and from then on, you can just use the abbreviation. Include a meaningful subject line. So when the person see the subject line, they must kind of have an idea what your mail is about. Find out and use the person's name in the greeting. If you are writing to the HR manager of a company that you are maybe seeking employment, do not just address it to the HR manager. See if you can go into the internet, see if you cannot uh, find uh, the person's name and then use the person's name in the greeting. If you have a reference number, please use it. Do not use punctuation in the address, the signature, or the name and leave enough blank lines uh, 
white spaces is your friend. Okay. Then let's have a quick look at faxes. This old-fashioned mode is still used by many government departments in South Africa. I've already told you that. Um, the principles is that a fax is less formal than a letter. So you don't have to use uh, the formal greetings that you would use in a letter. And in this case, use the template. Now, it's not, this is not an email template necessarily. It, if you're going to use a proper fax machine, use a template that you fill in and that you can send to somebody. As I said before, if you are going to use an email to fax, then you can use a, a Word template. Keep it short and clear, really. Um, remember... When it prints on the other side, uh, it might fall on the floor because there's no tray. And then the person picks up the first page and they don't even see there's a second page. So really, as far as faxes are concerned, you are trying to keep it on one page. and But still follow the rules of professionalism. Don't be sloppy just because it is a fax. Benefits and disadvantages of faxes, well, it delivers more quickly and the feedback is faster especially if it is a manned fax machine, then um, you can do it that way. Uh, often, at least when you send to a fax machine, you know that it's going to be printed out and somebody is going to take delivery. If you send an email to somebody, if they didn't uh, put an uh, out-of-office uh, message on there, they can be away for a week and you will not know why you are not getting any feedback. So in that case, uh, a fax is still very useful. The sender and the receiver have a paper record of it. That's that's nice. Um, it can be confidential. Remember, you don't know if you send an uh, email to how many people it will be forwarded. But if you send uh, a fax, then it's one copy that the send that the receiver is getting. If he then wants to go and make copies, that's a lot of uh, additional admin to do. That can be done. Okay, it can be done. Too casually and sloppily, sloppily. Please don't do that. If you have a terrible handwriting, then um, rather draw it up on your your PC, print it out, sign it, and fax it then. Because if you have a handwriting like me, then people will often not be able to read what you have written. And it could be that the intended recipient may not receive it. Sometimes there's one fax machine and there are 10 people using the fax machine. You do not know that the person that you are actually intended to send it for is going to give it to you. And then there on the right hand side, I've give you, uh, given you a little um, template of a fax. So it says two and then you will write the recipient's name. The fax will be the recipient's fax number, the date, the date. So every time there is a little prompt and then you just follow the prompt and then you can do it. So this thing at the top that I'm showing you here is what we call a, a fax cover letter. Okay, so if you have a very short message, it might be that you only have the fax cover letter, but um, if you're going to add a uh, fax something that is more, then you will also uh, say the number of pages so that the people know, listen, here it says that there's six pages and I only received four. I'm just going to look for the other two. And then you must also there by using the tick box say what you want the person's response to the fax to be. Thank you. That is then letters and faxes.